breaking news off the top at 5 o'clock now. Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy is stepping down from the high court. Kennedy said today that he will retire next month. His replacement will be President Trump's second pick to sit on the Supreme Court. In Washington, D.C. Bureau, Ross Palumbo, our chief there, he has this story live from the White House. Ross. Well, Lori and Calvin, it is impossible to overstate just how big this is. With Justice Kennedy retiring, the president now will permanently, for generations to come, change the makeup of the Supreme Court. Right now, it's pretty much split down the middle. Justice Kennedy frequently a swing vote, but now the president will be able to change the balance over to the conservative side. I think you want to go as quickly as possible. The president saying he'll search for a new Supreme Court justice immediately. So we have now boiled it down to about 25 people. It comes just minutes after Justice Anthony Kennedy announced his retirement. Thank you, Mr. President. After 30 years serving on the Supreme Court, the moderate and many times key swing vote for liberals says he'll leave at the end of July. I can be so strong and so certain in my views. The 81-year-old has been instrumental since appointed by President Ronald Reagan in settling key cases on gay marriage, abortion rights, and campaign finance laws. Will you meet with President Putin, sir, and where? Uh, most likely. John and Bolton is over there now. The president and national security advisor John Bolton now also confirming Trump will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Bolton, in Moscow today. It's important for the leaders of these two countries to meet. Uh, there are a wide range of issues despite the differences between us. The meeting will be in a third country in a few weeks. I've had a, a great a career. And the president also commenting on the stunning loss of longtime Congressman Joe Crowley in last night's primary to 28-year-old Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I can't let you know. Crowley is a leading Democrat, unseated now by a newcomer. That was a shocker. Uh, I was surprised. Everybody was surprised. We had somebody that's been in there for many years, Mr. President, and I think he probably took it for granted. And in the wake of ongoing protests and a federal judge's order halting immigrant family separations, the president saying very little. Will you fight that? The California judge who says reunited families must be put together. Well, we're going to see, but we believe that families should be together. Well, back to Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy now resigning. So, Lauren Calvin, who is the next nominee going to be? The president saying just a few minutes ago that he's going to choose from that list of 25 that he put out more than a year ago. I've reposted that list on my Twitter handle, at Ross Palumbo. Take a look at that. The next nominee is going to be one of those 25 names. And, Ross, it's... It's hard to think about the future now. It's all coming to be. How do you see this playing out when the Senate has to confirm President Trump's pick? Well, Lori, remember Merrick Garland? President Obama certainly does, and the Democrats certainly do. Remember, the Republicans delayed that choice and refused to hold a confirmation hearing for an entire year for President Obama's Supreme Court nominee. Now Chuck Schumer on the floor of the Senate just a little while ago telling Republicans they should do the same thing. The excuse then, Republicans were saying, was that it was an election year, so a president shouldn't be allowed to make a nominee. Well, the midterms are coming up in just a few months, and Schumer wants Republicans to hold off until after the midterms. But you and I both know that is extremely unlikely. The president here at the White House saying that he wants them to move on this immediately. Battle lines have been drawn. Our Ross Palumbo live for us at the White House. Ross, thanks a lot for that. I'm bringing it back home now to Sunrise, where a slain rapper is being remembered. Hundreds of fans coming out to mourn the loss of XXX Tentacion, who was shot and killed last week. And today, investigators name a new person of interest in this case. His name and a mugshot you see there released today. Authorities now want to speak with 22-year-old Robert Allen. He was seen on surveillance video shortly before the rapper was gunned down. Our own Carlos Suarez is live in Deerfield Beach with the latest on the case. Carlos. Since the day of the shooting, there had been talk about surveillance cameras at Riva Motorsports capturing as these men walked in, walked back out, and then boxed the rapper in his car. 22-year-old Robert Allen finds himself a part of the investigation into the murder of rapper XXX Tentacion. The sheriff's office is eager to catch up with him and ask a few questions. A surveillance camera captured Allen at Riva Motorsports in Deerfield Beach the day of the murder. Right now, they're hoping, obviously, that he would come in and talk to them and share what he knows. Allen was out on probation for a 2016 arrest on 22 counts of identification fraud. According to social media accounts, he's friends with 22-year-old Diedrich Williams, who was arrested last week in connection with the rapper's death. 
According to Williams arrest form, the musician arrived at the business with a friend and minutes later the killers pulled up in an SUV. We're told the car was not stolen and that detectives found it Tuesday and now are taking a look at it. They recovered the vehicle the Dodge Journey that was used in this murder. That was the vehicle that blocked the, the wrapper in outside of the um, Riva Motorsports. And so fans at this hour are still out here at a memorial at the site of the shooting. Now the sheriff's office wouldn't say where that car was found or who it was registered to. If you have any information that could help them out, including any information on Allen, go ahead and give Broward Crime Stoppers a call at 954-493-TIPS. A reminder, you can remain anonymous. We're live at this hour in Deerfield Beach. I'm Carlo Suarez, Local 10 News. All right, Carlos, and meanwhile, fans lined up under the blazing hot sun for a chance to bid the rapper a final farewell. They came out by the thousands for an open casket memorial at the BB&T Center in Sunrise for XXX Tentacion. And the wait was well worth it, they say, for those who followed his music for years and were left heartbroken over his sudden death. Once they played their, his songs and, you know, once we were walking there, we just got really emotional when it came to that. Everybody around us was just breaking down. And his music was powerful stuff. Uh, it impacted a lot of lives. So it's really just important to come out here, you know, to mourn and stuff. You know, we cared about him a lot. If you plan on paying your respects, you have until 6 o'clock tonight, and there are no cell phones, cameras, or any type of recording devices allowed inside. And now to a one and only exclusive on this highway shocker. A man seen clinging to a car as it was speeding down the road. And now we're hearing from that man about exactly what happened. Let's go to local 10 news reporter Leanne Motorhome Live now with this one for us. Leanne. And Calvin, we are also trying to get the other side of this story, speaking with the driver who was behind the wheel. But we did speak to the man who said he was surprised he was able to hang on for so long, driving 15 miles south, including a large part of that on I-95. As 22-year-old Junior Francis clung to the hood of a car down the highway, he says he had one thought. This woman's going to kill me, like... She's really out to kill me. That's Francis in this now viral video. His ex-girlfriend, Patricia Isidore, age 24, behind the wheel. She's now facing a culpable negligence charge in connection with this wild ride. I didn't even thought I had it in me to save to stay on that long. Francis says it all started at this Lauder Hill home where the ex-couple still lives together. He says they both needed the car that day, but she beat him to it. So Francis jumped on the hood to keep Isidore from leaving. She turned the engine on, dropped it in reverse, and started driving out, and then that's when things took a turn. A few turns, in fact, before jumping onto the I-95 express lanes heading south. I am so confused. The sight leaving fellow drivers dumbfounded. Riding on the hood like it's no big deal. All the while, Francis says he was calling 911. I actually held on like this, and it was with one hand, and the other hand I'm holding the phone. Francis says he hung on as Isidore drove 15 miles south, exiting on Ives Dairy Road, eventually ending up in West Park. It just kept going and going and going. Where Francis says he removed the keys from the ignition, and Isidore was arrested. She didn't care about me. And you heard there that Francis said he was on the phone while on the hood of that car talking to 911 just into our newsroom. We've got an excerpt of one of those calls. Oh, yes, 911. What's your yes, emergency? Um, I'm, my life is in danger. I'm actually on the top of my car. Someone's driving me inside of the More of that coming up at 6 o'clock. For now, we're live along on I-95, Leanne Morejon, Local 10 News. And we look forward to it. Okay, thanks a lot, Leanne. Right now, a live look from our weather cameras all across South Florida. Looking kind of pretty out there. Yeah. But there are some spots seeing rain. Well, in fact, a viewer sent us this picture from uh, near the Miccosukee Reservation in the Everglades. A funnel cloud forming at around 3.30 this afternoon. Ooh, pretty what awesome. What a picture. Oh, Chief yeah. Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis is right here in the Weather Center. <laughs> and Betty, give us a quick check on the forecast. Hi, everyone. Those storms over the interior and the one that formed that funnel cloud well west of Chrome Avenue, I can show you what's left of it as it's weakening and tending to drop on down toward the south. So I don't think we have to worry about that one through portions of Dade County. Meantime, Broward County, I am going to keep an eye to the sky here because it looks as though a shower or storm is trying to form in south central 
Palm Beach County and this is tending to drift on down toward the south. That said, Coral Springs and Parkland, I would definitely keep an eye to the sky over the next hour just to see how it all evolves. And whatever we do have over the interior or inland areas, once the sun goes down, that activity should diminish. Let's get the tropical update. We are looking out over the Atlantic Basin and quiet is the word. No tropical cyclone development is expected over the next several days. I'll be back in a few minutes with a look at the seven day planner. Calvin. Okay, Betty, thanks a lot. If I ever seen Tango's traffic in Dania Beach today, a car bursting into flames at around 11 o'clock just west of I-95 on Griffin Road. Thankfully, firefighters were able to get the situation under control pretty quickly. There are no reports of any injuries. I was tied up in that traffic for a while today. Uh -oh. I can attest to that one. <laughs> and now at rush hour, we're watching a crash on State Route 84 in Davie. Our Denise Fernandez standing by with a look at how to get around this mess. Denise. Yeah, you're going to see those delays. We're talking about State Road 84 as you're heading westbound. This is right around Pine Island Road. And unfortunately, this crash is blocking three right lanes of traffic. So expect those delays to last for a few miles, coming in at around 10 miles miles per hour. So instead of State Road 84, you may want to consider taking I-595 as your alternate. And that's not the only crash I'm watching, but I'm watching this crash in Southwest Miami Dade. We mentioned it about 30 minutes ago, and even though it's pushed off to the shoulder, those delays are still in place. This is the Turnpike Southbound right as you're approaching Bro Bird Road. So expect some of those delays to be in place with speeds coming in 30 miles per hour. Lori. Thank you, Janice. After days of persistent protests in Pittsburgh, the police officer who allegedly shot and killed an unarmed teenager last week has been charged with homicide just today. Officer Michael Rossfeld opened fire on 17 year old Antoine Rose as he ran away from a traffic stop. The car Rose was in was suspected in an earlier shooting, but Rose did not appear to be the shooter. Rose was shot in the back, which the medical examiner stated was fatal, and he ruled the teen's death a homicide. According to police reports, Officer Rossfeld made inconsistent statements. He allegedly first told investigators he saw a dark object that he thought was a gun. Later, he said he didn't see a gun. He is scheduled for a hearing July 6th. Well, the U.S. Justice Department has filed hate crimes charges against 21-year-old James Fields. He's the man you see here who allegedly drove directly into a crowd protesting a white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. Fields is currently in custody facing a number of charges, including first-degree murder. The federal crimes include one count of hate involving the death of Heather Heyer and 28 other hate crimes involving an attempt to kill. Firefighters out west, they are still trying to get the upper hand on the massive wildfire burning in Northern California. While evacuations have been lifted in some communities, the so-called Pawnee Fire near Sacramento, it's grown to 13,000 acres. We're told at least 22 structures have been destroyed already. About 600 are in the path of the flames. And that fire is only 25% contained. Well, police officers looking for a paintball bandit. That's right. It sounds odd, but someone is out there shooting the painful pellets at people and it's building. What's being done to track down the paintball shooter ahead at 6 o'clock? And it's a waiting game for bringing soccer to South Florida. But now we know when a big announcement will be made. That's ahead at 4.30. And remembering the life of Joe Jackson, father of pop sensations, Michael, Janet, and the Jackson 5. Don't miss this after the break. And tonight at 11. A nationwide epidemic now taking root in our own backyard. <laughs> Opioid overdoses. Local 10 News takes a look at a new program offering patients hope to escape the pain. Tonight at 11 on Local 10 News.
Welcome back tonight. Remembering Joe Jackson, the father of a musical dynasty that started with the Jackson 5. He died today. He was rushed to the hospital just days ago. And now his legendary family, they're all coping with the loss. Louis Aguirre is in the video port now with this tragedy. Louis. Yeah, this just two days after the ninth anniversary of the death of Michael Jackson, the family must now cope with the death of the man who built their legacy. He was the man behind this musical dynasty with a string of hits like ABC. ABC. Joe Jackson launching the Jackson 5 in 1966 and credited with starting the iconic solo careers of son Michael and daughter Janet. The king of pop later estranged from his father. He and other siblings alleging years of physical and emotional abuse. Michael describing his fear of his father in the 2003 Martin Bashir documentary, Living with Michael Jackson. I mean scared, so scared that we, I would regurgitate. You would vomit? Mm-hmm. When would you vomit? What, what, what would produce that sort of reaction in you? His presence, just seeing him. And uh, sometimes I'd faint and my bodyguards would have to hold me up. Joe Jackson admitting to CNN in 2013 he did physically discipline his children. I'm glad I was tough because look what I came out with. Hmm? I came out with some kids that everybody loved all over the world. Joe Jackson dying Wednesday at 89 of pancreatic cancer. This tweet sent from his account just three days earlier, quote, I have seen more sunsets than I have left to see. Granddaughter Paris saying it was not written by Joe. Other reaction from the family with grandson Randy Jackson Jr. tweeting, rest in peace to the king that made everything possible. I love you, Grandpa. Joe Jackson had 10 children with his wife of 60 years, though they had a strained relationship. Catherine Jackson was at his bedside when he passed away. Lori and Calvin, back to you. Louis Aguirre in our video port. Louis, thank you. Let's turn to the weather now because it's been pretty darn gorgeous out there, but you might have gotten yeah. caught up in a little little lightning and storms today. Yeah, and also, you know, that hot stuff too, that sauna, <laughs> as soon as you walk out the front door, especially if you have a suit on. You know? Oh, yes. And the lady <laughs> who knows, Betty Davis, is right here to join us. What do you see this midweek, Betty? I see still more hot weather ahead and rain chances that are going to be going a little bit lower. Right now, check it out. Our Mount Sinai Medical Center Tower camera looking a little hazy out there as we uh, stare upon the magic city 89 degrees by the way that was the high temperature in miami we measured just over a tenth of an inch of rainfall out there so far 88 degrees is where we are now southeast breeze at 13 miles per hour 91 for you pembroke pines marathon showing 90 you factor in that humidity and it still feels as though some of you are in the mid and upper 90s at this hour we did have some showers and thunderstorms to develop in the early part of the afternoon parts of broward maybe you had some rumbles of thunder in your neighborhood now, much of the activity is off to the west or over the interior, and uh, we're just simply not seeing a whole lot impacting our areas. We'll take the view down in today, looking just south of 41. Thunderstorm has diminished, so not a whole lot left to talk about even over the Everglades. Now let's take the view up into Broward, looking good, right around Coral Springs, Parkland, down toward Weston. Notice this shower right here in south central Palm Beach County. This is one to watch as it seems to be drifting slowly down to the south, and maybe it nudges a little closer toward Coral Springs or Parkland in the next 30 minutes to an hour. So that's just one of those spotty things we watch out for. And anything that we do have going out there, check out the forecast plan for the rest of the afternoon and evening. By 9 o'clock tonight, most, much of that I will have diminished. Nothing more than a stray shower at that point. Most areas probably just dealing with scattered clouds and temperatures in the low 80s. The heat is definitely on not only here, and by the way, the heat is on here, but it is seasonable. Elsewhere, though, temperatures are running a few degrees above average for this time of the year. Check out the scheme from coast to coast. We see that 107 in Phoenix. How about that 93 in Memphis, that 89 in Atlanta? Ridge of high pressure in play, and underneath that ridge, it is hot and it is humid. So there are other areas sweating it out. For us, the summer sizzle, it stays, it sticks. We already know that. And with daytime heating tomorrow, we could have more afternoon storms popping up. And then check the weather scene on Friday. Still hot. We won't rule out a few storms, but have you seen the seven-day planner lately? Have you heard about the fact that the rain chance is going lower? 
Well, check it out. We're expecting some drier air to move on in, and that should make the difference in terms of suppressing numerous shower thunderstorm activity. So by Friday, Saturday, 30% chance of rain instead of 50%. Lori? We'll take it. All right, thank you, Betty. And we have new details about a highway shocker. Well, tonight we are hearing from the man seen clinging to the hood of a car that was racing down the interstate. It's a one and only exclusive, and it's all new at 11 o'clock. The waiting game and bringing soccer to South Florida could soon be over when an announcement will be made that could propel the project forward. And parasailing panic, we hear from the family of a San Diego woman who is now recovering from a terrible accident in another country. Find out what it took to get her back home. I'm Clay Ferrero. The summer of LeBron is about to tip off, but it likely won't last very long. Why LeBron James could have a new team very soon. Next in sports. Lori Jennings and Calvin Hughes on the one and only Local 10 News.